Yeah, yeah as Mark, Mark said, we are kind of finishing off this Smash the Bible series. series. But, but this morning, morning I'm going to talk about fear. There are many, many different, different types of fear. Fear, fear of, of the dark, dark fear, fear of creatures, fear of the unknown, fear of man, fear of failing or, or um, embarrassing yourself. They're just a few. I found, I found this great, great quote, quote from Oswald Chambers, Chambers an, an eight, early 20th century, century Scottish evangelist teacher, as I hear about all this morning. It says, the remarkable thing about God is when, when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. It's so powerful. When you fear God, you fear nothing else. But, but if you, you don't, don't fear God, God, you fear everything else. Um, although although fear, fear isn't a deadly, deadly sin, sin, it has the same power to take us away from God, God just, just like all the others do. Fear has the power to take control of our minds and reduce us to being incapable of achieving almost anything. Fear is a crippling mindset that, that does, can and does affect everything we do. Fear, just like an idol, has the ability to reduce us and our effectiveness. It also grows bigger the, the more we allow it to, uh, to rule. If we don't deal with it, it continues to grow. When we think about fear, we often think about the things that we are scared about, darkness, spiders, snakes. And we understand we need to have a healthy fear of some of these things because they are dangerous or can be dangerous. Fear gives us the shot of adrenaline to help us fight or fight. If the boss is pushing you to get some work done, the fear of what he might do pushes you to get the work done on time and not procrastinate. So sometimes, sometimes fear, fear can be good for us. This, this morning, I would like, like to challenge us all to start living a fear-free life. life. I, I want, want to encourage you to understand how much more powerful and effective you will become if you get rid of all the areas that you are feeling in fear, where fear overcomes you. It's quite a feat, but definitely possible. I have three things I think will help us live fearlessly. The first is look away. A few weeks ago, I was in Taco and a really scary incident happened to me. And the night before, there'd been a fresh, big dump of snow, and lots of people were coming to where I was staying to make the most of it and ski. Whereas well, I was taking the kids, kids to go snowmobiling, so I was driving in the opposite direction. And I dropped the children off, and uh, I had to rejoin this line of traffic as they go back to where I was staying. And I saw a gap, a good gap, and I pulled my car off. The person at the left of that was not happy at all. And he uh, drove the closest I think anybody's ever driven to me. And he was revving his engine and he was weaving from side, side to side, side with my thing. And I was pretty scared. scared. I, was I was trying, trying to think of ways to... Um, sorry, I'm getting involved. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was, I was like, like, I think, I think I'm, maybe, maybe we could pull off and let this person pass. pass. But there was so much snow, snow I couldn't, I there was no safe place to pull off. And, and all, all the traffic in front of me was breaking and breaking because of the dangerous situation that this guy was right behind me. And I was scared. And I was like, oh God! Oh God, I'm really scared. scared. I literally say this, my heart was I was like, oh God, I'm really scared. I'm scared. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then I suddenly remembered, oh, I'm preaching on fear. In a few weeks, I better, I better sort this out. So I was like, God, help me. I am actually really scared about this drive. And I felt him say, look ahead. Don't worry about what's going on behind you. Drive as if he's not there concentrate on what the traffic's doing in front and just drive. For 20 minutes, this man revved and weaved behind me. But I felt God's calm. I felt his peace over my life. I understood I was looking away 
from the thing that was petrifying me. Um, I found my peace. In Psalm 16, Psalm 16, 8 says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. This way of dealing with fear can only be used at certain times, in certain situations. It's only a few times it's actually applicable. On the same trip, uh, Beth was chatting away. There was a big spider by her head, and she was chat, 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 chat. And then she spotted the spider and freaked out. Sometimes ignorance is bliss. But to overcome our fears or to become fearless, we need to face and deal with our fears. Just like all the idols, fear takes us away from God. It reduces us. Fear keeps us limited. We have a limit less God. But if we keep putting ourselves in a fear-filled box, we are not going to be effective. We will not be able to do all God has called us and created us to do. All the way through the Bible, it says, do not fear, fear not, don't be afraid. So how do we smash fear? Just the same way as smashing idols in our lives, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to show us where we are allowing fear to keep us out of living in God's best, out of living in his freedom. We need to ask him to give us strategies on how to get rid of them. And then we need to ask him to help us. Fear, just like idols, if it's not dealt with, gets bigger and bigger. It grows. The more fear we allow in our lives, the more things we will fear. The more we'll be afraid of, just like the quote I read this morning. But thank God, the truth works the other way around. The more you face your fears, the more you deal with your fears, the more power you'll have, the less fear you'll feel, the less you will be afraid of. There will be fewer things that you are afraid of. There is a time to look away, but there's also a time to face it. The second way to overcome fear is to look at it or to face it. David is someone we all know from the Bible to be someone quite fearless. Most of us know the story about David and Goliath found in 1 Samuel 17. David, um, David's brothers are on the front line fighting for the Israelite army. They're fighting against the Philistines. The Philistines have a giant called Goliath. And every day, twice a day, for 40 days, he comes out with a threat or a challenge. If you can take me out, if one, one of your fighters can kill me, my, our whole army will surrender to you. But if I kill you, your army has to surrender to me. Uh, David's dad, Jesse, asked David, hey, go to the front lines, go and check on your brothers, give them this food and bring news back to me. Um, this is where I'm going to pick the story up. 1 Samuel 17, 22 to 27. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines and ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking to them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they fled from, from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and he will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills the Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. 
all the Israelites fled in great fear. Even though they were all talking about this amazing reward they would get, none of them felt brave enough to try. They dare not fight him. David can't believe the nerve of Goliath and wants to sort him out. The story carries on, 32 to 37. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on, your, on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you're not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only young, a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and rescued it from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled the armies of God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go, may the Lord be with you. David offered to fight, offers to fight um, Goliath and Saul says, no, you're, you're too young, you're too weak. And David answers with the reason he has no fear of Goliath. He has already seen and heard, um, sorry, he's already um, dealt with smaller giants. He heard, as soon as he heard Goliath and saw Goliath, he wasn't afraid. In fact, he was fearless. He was frustrated and annoyed. Um, I'm, I'm impressed with David. When the lion and the bear came, he didn't just protect his sheep. He actually chased after them and took them out, took the sheep from his mouth and then killed them. He gives the credit for his ability to the Lord. He knows that God can and will help him with Goliath. He has faith because he has seen and done the things God has told him to do before. It is not in his ability, but he trusts God's interest, God's ability. He trusts that God will be with him just the same as he was before. This is the most effective way to deal with fear. I've actually seen this work um, really quickly. I was, we were staying in a house in Sweden, and in Sweden they have these big spiders. I'm talking a lot about spiders. They're about the size of your hand, but they're not dangerous. And we were in this house, and one of my oldest daughter's boyfriends was visiting, and there's this big spider on the wall, and everyone's... And he is just as frightened as everybody else, but he's taller than everybody else. So I said to him, you're the only one that can reach it. You're going to have to do it. And so I told him, get a glass and, and, and talked him through it. He was petrified, but he did it because there was nobody else. And when he got the spider in the glass, went outside and, and threw it out, he came back a different man. I can honestly say... I could see that he had overcome a real fear and he felt brave. In fact, I think the rest of the trip he went looking for spiders to protect and save everybody from the big black spiders up the walls. So, uh, but I saw how facing his fear broke the fear, the power the fear had had on his life before. The third way we can overcome fear is to look to Jesus. Peter was full of fear until he had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Matthew 14 is the story about Peter walking on water. It showed us he was willing to try trusting in the Lord. But then in Matthew 14, 13, it says, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. He got scared as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus. Suddenly, he was filled with fear. Mark spoke about Peter's denial of, of um, Jesus a couple of weeks ago when he was at the um, crucifixion. A servant girl frightened him to admit that he was with Jesus. 
So we can see by these things that he is full of fear. But later in the New Testament, Peter, who Jesus called the rock the first time he met him, becomes the rock of the church, one of the main leaders after Jesus' resurrection. He actually wrote in 1 Peter 3, 13 to 14. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. Sorry, I haven't got the next bit. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for, for the hope you have. But do this in gentleness and respect. So what changed? Peter didn't get braver by not looking, by trying harder, by repeating, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. We can see this is a new Peter. I want you to notice the change and see what made the difference happen, happen in a relatively short period of time. He overcame fear by spending time with Jesus in his presence, receiving forgiveness from him. He heard Jesus' plans for his future, and he believed that that was truth. When Jesus spoke to Peter three times after his resurrection, he reminded Peter that he had a plan for his life and for the church. John 21, 15 to 17 says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you, Jesus said. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Peter received forgiveness and encouragement to go and be what Jesus had called him to be. The the first time Peter ever met Jesus. He also overcame fear by spending time with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2, it tells us about what happened at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit filled, filled the room and all the disciples and the people that were there were filled too. And it was life-changing. Acts 2.14 states that it was Peter who stood up and addressed the crowd. It says... Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this, this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. It was an encounter with the Holy Spirit that gave Peter the courage to stand up and speak to all of these people fearlessly. When he experienced the Holy Spirit, that's when he became fearless and stood out amongst the disciples. Acts 4.13 says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. I love the fact that the people could see the change the people could see this isn't the same people that we were dealing with before. And they understood that it was because they spent time with Jesus. Peter continues to grow in fearlessness. Like we were saying, the more you face your fears, the less your fears come and the braver and stronger you get. Later in Acts, there is an account where Herod arrests and kills James. And then he arrests Peter but because of Passover, he puts Peter in prison until after he's going to deal with him after Passover. Peter is guarded with four squads of four soldiers. I don't think it was comfortable, and he was in prison. He was so fearless about what was going to happen. It says that when an angel of the Lord came to wake him up, 
he had to be struck awake. I think to be able to sleep like that is either you are at total peace or you've taken something. I know they didn't have it back then, so I know he was at complete peace about God was, what God was going to do. That account is found in Acts 12, 1 to 7. So how do we go about smashing fear for good? You need to take the fear and the idols that keep you away from God and his best for your life and diligently smash them. It was when Peter took his eyes off Jesus that the fear took him out. Remember, fear gets bigger when it is not dealt with, just the same as with idols. Ask Jesus to help you whenever you feel afraid. Seek the Holy Spirit daily. Seek his presence. Remember, God has a plan for you, for your good, and for the church, and to bring glory to him and all he has got planned for us as a, as a humanity. Remember, fear is a lack of trust in God. So trust him. These actions are all good for fears that we deal with individually, a little bit like the idols. But what about when the world is telling us we have a lot to fear about, that we feel we can't do anything about? Before I finish, I want to mention the last few years that we've all been dealing with. Fear has held so many captives, including Christians. I actually read a statistic uh, the other day that said, anxiety, which as we know is a result of fear, has, the statistics are that it's grown 5,000 times in this last couple of years, just in America alone. So just as the world is held captive, so are Christians. We have forgotten who our God is. In John 1, 4, 4, it says, oh good, you dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Um, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He is more powerful than anything that's going on in this world. The last few years in America alone has been filled with fear. Politics. We have forgotten. It's God who puts the people in power. Disease. We have forgotten that God is our healer. And now war. We have forgotten that God will bring justice. If you're struggling with fear about what's going on in the world, don't sit watching the news. Turn it off. Go and get your Bible and start reading. Pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you overcome your fears. Call a friend. And start praying for change. Seek and look to Jesus. Trust in your God. I want to finish with, um, I want to also just say, if you are feeling full of fear, call, some, call one of us. Get some prayer. We'd love to pray you through, a, uh, break off some of the change that fear can, can uh, put you all under. So I'm about to finish. If Becky wants to come back up, we're going to go into communion. Psalm 46, I think, is an encouraging scripture that should help us to remember who is in charge and how we can be fearless. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fail. She will not fall. 
God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fail. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. Sorry. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.